Hello everyone, this is the Tomo Quads Chopstick CSX. I built mine with the Diatone Mamba 1105, 5500 kV motors. On those motors we got the 3x3 HQ props. The flight controller ESC all-in-one board is the GEP RC12 Amp F4 version. Camera is the Runcam Nano 2. VTX is the TBS Unify Pro 32 Nano. Inside is also the FR Sky XM Plus receiver. Mine weighs 68 and a half grams. Motor post to motor post, I'm getting about 115 millimeters. Bottom carbon fiber plate is 2 millimeters. Arms appear to be seven millimeters wide. I did still use the connectors. I also have a bit of a battery pad on here. Hopefully you saw that my battery, again, was not fully charged. It's probably because my battery sat too long. You know, I, I charge things up and then I hope to use them all and then I take all the charged batteries out and every once in a while I run into a battery that, you know, it, it had been charged for three, four days and started to lose a little bit of that charge, kind of that top end. So in the flight that you see, you'll be able to fly more aggressively and get more flight time than I did in this. Uh, now this particular one took me a while to bring to the channel because I kept tinkering with motors and props. If you've been following along closely, you know that I've been trying to do more custom builds to get me closer to three minute flight time. And, and that comes from you. Uh, you all talk about like sometimes I only get you know two minutes or two minutes, 15 seconds, or even 2.30 isn't enough for some people. And so I figure if I can get to three minutes, then that's a pretty good balance to strike as long as it doesn't turn into, you know, a slow cruising flight. If I can fly like I want to fly and get three minutes, I think that helps more people get the flight time they want. You know, if you're if you're flying a slower style, uh, you might get four or five minutes. If you're flying more aggressively, you probably should still get about two, two and a half minutes out of this, depending upon what all out is to you. So I, I ended up going through a series of motors, and we'll, we'll kind of go through those real quickly at the desk. Uh, but what I'm flying here, as I had the quick roll, is a Diatone Mamba because when I flew those other Diatone products, I think the 239 and maybe the 249, I was pretty impressed with this as 1105 motor. I thought it performed pretty well on relatively heavy units. So this is swinging a little bit of a big prop for an 1105 motor, but it is bi-blade, so that helps a little bit. But I also tinkered with uh, a two and a half inch prop on this, and I just couldn't get my flight time to three minutes. I think a bi-blade, I'd be very interested if there is a two and a half inch bi-blade out there. I really like to test that out, but I've looked around and I ha haven't seen any. Maybe I'm missing them. So if you guys are aware of a, a currently produced two and a half inch bi-blade, I know we can cut these down and try them that way. But I'm looking for something that's native, two and a half inch that's a bi-blade. I would like to try that out a little bit. Just see what the performance is like and, and to see what the flight time ends up being. Uh, but we're going to get over three minutes in this flight, as you'll see when we get down to the end. And uh, I figure that's pretty good, you know. I I don't oftentimes get that with binding flies, so when I do, I kind of make a big stink about it or a big positive deal about it. And you'll see that we get around two and a half minutes, we get our first battery warnings, and that's pretty good. That's kind of what I'm looking for. It's one of those triggers that I know that if I get to two and a half minutes and I get my battery warning, that I'll probably be good for a flight that gets nearly three minutes. Maybe not all the time, depending upon the battery and how I'm flying. Uh, if you saw the, what was it, uh, I, just a video ago I did on the ER349, that had two different flights, and one of them was like 240, and the other one was like 308, I think. But to me, I couldn't hardly tell a difference, but there had to have been a difference. Maybe it was the battery, maybe I've maintained the, the battery that lasted longer a little bit better. Um, so there could be quite a variable and hardly any performance difference when it comes to what you're looking at visually in the FPV view. Uh, but this wraps up the end of our flight. We'll go back to the typical OSD. You get to see my landing voltage again, as we normally do. You see that we got 312, and we're at 3.6 volts per cell, which is pretty good. We could have flown a little bit longer. So I think the first thing to talk about is you could save more weight. Uh, I think if we went with, well, well, one, the connectors. So if we pull the connectors off or desolder them, however you want to go about doing it, and we just solder directly to the pads, that might all the way around save us a gram. And you can kind of see where I cut them that I'm hopeful that if I don't have the connector that I've still got enough of the native wire that where I'll be able to go right up to the pads. Um, I may have to lengthen those a little bit. I wasn't real precise, I think, on all four cuts. But that's my plan is I wanted to use the connectors to see how that might impair the flight, just like I did with the other Tomo Quads, the CS3. And I wanted to try it again. And I thought about going right back to those 1106 um, 6300 KV AMAX motors. But I thought, you know, I've already run those. And I've run them on these props. And I've run them on a, 
machine that weighs over 70 grams and this is you know only 60 and a half grams or 65 grams so i wanted to try a different motor so if you don't like those particular motors if or the cost is too much uh, you can look at these and last time i looked at these i think these motors were coming in at eight or nine dollars a set so if you're a builder you know I, they won't blow your mind but you know you saw the flight footage you 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 kind of make your own judgment if you're looking for a new motor or a, an additional motor to try on your micro builds, I would give these a go. I thought they were pretty surprising. Natively, before you cut the motor wires, these motors come in at just under 7 grams. Now, I had one of the four that I bought came in right at 7 grams, but all the others came in at usually about 6.9 grams or right around there, 6.88, 6.89. So that's about what you can expect. And of course, we, we cut a little bit of the motor wire and that weight goes down. I'm going to insert this little section here because I think something else you need to be aware of is you don't have to use 1100 series motors if if the motor supports a 9x9 mounting pattern uh, like the Superman Airblade motors you can mount those to this this will give you more prop control it's a much larger stator and then an 1105 or 1106 will uh, plus there's some efficiency gains you can get there this is the Retorius Zoot I did a video on that in a while and this is the Maximus FPV Minuteman I bring this out because it's another a 1404 based motor that has the 9x9 mounting pattern so you can get more prop control and gain some efficiency they come in various KV uh, the Superman motor comes from airbladeuav.com. They are hard to get a hold of, so if you're thinking about purchasing some of these and they're available when you go looking, I would suggest uh, picking some up because they don't seem to last long. Of course, you probably have various vendors like GetFPV. Uh, I think Airblade also carries these 1404s, the Rotor X motors as well. Airblade was pretty close to the Rotor X crew. Uh, so another motor to look at if you're building one of these, but these do come in at two grams more per motor. These are going to add quite a bit of weight. So if weight is important to you, I would suggest sticking with an 110X size motor. Also something else that I've tinkered with, not necessarily on this build, but in other builds, is when we're using a TPU canopy, it seems to be really important that we're hard mounting the board and getting this as securely mounted as we can to eliminate that jello. I've got several others that I've been tinkering with, and there's also, you. we've seen some reviews to where when you put one of these nano cameras in here, like the Runcam Nano 2 or the EOS, there's enough weight up here, apparently, that if your tune isn't just perfect, that you end up with jello, or your props aren't perfect, they end up with a little bit of jello. And I think from time to time when I would come in from that swoop, if I got on the throttle too aggressively as I was coming down to kind of level out, you may have seen a little bit of jello. But I noticed that if you don't hard mount these boards with a TPU canopy, you get more jello than I want. So that's something to take into consideration when you're doing your builds. You'll see right here I have a nylon standoff. It's a little bit of a pain to do this, but I ended up going this way. Initially I had a nut and then I had to soft mounting and that was pretty bad as far as the jello goes. So if you're suffering from jello with the TPU mount, try hard mounting. Uh, you'll probably have to work on your tune a little bit more because you'll have more vibrations possibly getting into the flight controller. But I didn't do anything fancy with this one. I just... I did my typical tuning. I'm running Betaflight 357 on this. 357 is also important when it comes to running smart audio for the TBS Unify Pro 32 Nano. Uh, if you're running an older version, it won't work. You have to run at least, oh, is it 3.54 Betaflight that it started to work? Anyways, use 3.57 or higher. Use 4 if you want. I'm... For the most part, I've been sticking with 357. Also, the tape on here, Frank Burajas, I'm still using his roll. This is Emacs tape. Uh, it comes in a wider roll, and I think it's largely out of stock. If someone can find another source, another place to buy that, I'll sure spread the word because I think this is the tape we're looking for. Now, you do have to be careful with getting the oils from your fingers on the ends, or they will come up. I reapplied some tape to some of these because I think I was being a little bit too careless with my fingers, and I got some finger oil on there, and then the edges started coming up. Also, if you're looking for these connectors in black, I have only been able to find them from airbladeuav.com. So if you're wanting connectors and you're wanting them in black, I think on eBay you can find the ones that are multicolored, uh, like come on the uh, the toothpick, the uh, full speed toothpick, you know how it's got multicolored. I think it's multicolored. Anyways, there's multicolored connectors out there all over the place, but all black as far as I know. Uh, only from Airblade UAV. I also used uh, rounded heads up here. That allowed me to get my USB cable. I found when I used the thicker heads, I forget the name of what they're called, more like this that I've got out here in the motors. If I used those down here, I had troubles getting my USB uh, cable connected there. Also, I threaded up through on these two positions and down through in the other two positions 
two positions and I did that mainly because it just allows my battery to get in there nice and smooth. I don't have to worry about the battery coming down and hitting on this. It should stick here on the pad. Matter of fact, look, that screws up there a little bit. Can you see this head? Need to screw that down. Fixed. You could possibly also save some weight by using a different battery strap. You can use the rubber band method. Yep, that might help you drop a gram. I think this only weighs like two and a quarter grams as it is. This is the shorter version from iFlight. You can buy those on Amazon. You can also buy them directly from iFlight. Uh, probably Banggood and various other sources. So the next thing that I'll probably do to this is I'll disassemble it and I'll solder the wires directly to the pads on the board just to see if there's really any difference. I think if you're really looking for that extra edge of, edge of performance, I would encourage you to do that, to direct solder your wires. There's got to be some sort of bottleneck using these uh, connectors, but at the very least, in the last two Tomo Quads videos that I've done, you'll be able to see what the performance can be like with the motors that I choose and the props that I choose using connectors. And if you want more performance, you can take the connectors off and you can direct solder them, which I'm going to do on this one because I do plan to fly this a lot more, as well as my CS3. And uh, I think it's a good time. I like the fact that it's tight. I like a tight pod. I also like the fact that it's got this little fin on top, so if you were to get yourself in a bad spot, uh, we should have a little bit of an angle, so when we're looking at the FPV view, we should know which way we need to rotate, whether we go over like that, because so we won't always want to try to use the props. Sorry, the camera's out of focus there. Try to use the props that have clearance to go this way, so we should be able to see that in our view, and that little fin kind of helps to make sure you have an angle one way or another. It's not just sitting flat. Of course, if you're in grass or brush, uh, you're kind of hosed. Maybe go pick it up. You know, I, I made a video about turtle mode and being careful. Um, in my particular case with this Gephardt Seaboard, I haven't had any troubles. I think this is the second one I used. I've only used one of the Beta FPV boards. I've got another machine, the Humquad uh, HM100 or HX100 that has the Beta FPV board. I've been flying that on 3S as well, and it seems to be fine. So it's kind of, you know, if you have an affinity for one of those two boards, you could use that. Uh, a new one coming to market, which is probably made by the same place, is from No Name RC, which I suspect that is Full Speed RC. Um, so that's another option you can look for. I think the No Name RC board that's just like these, or at least from what I've seen, it's just like the Gep RC and the Beta FPV, is the, the, the Beta FPV one does not have buzzer pads. And the Gep RC board, as well as the No Name RC or Full Speed RC board, does have solder pads. So that's the primary thing between the beta FPV board and the other two. I think the no-name RC board will also be a few dollars less. I think it was supposed to retail for $36.99, and I think that's a dollar or two less than the GEP RC board. Plus the GEP RC boards, I think, are kind of hard to come by right now. But I should also draw your attention. We've got some motor protection out here, and that can be really important, especially in crash. If you fly on a concrete, I would expect a two millimeter bottom plate. You know, Tomo uses really good uh, carbon, and there's a little look at the weave there. I I think if you fly over concrete, you should just expect more damage. Uh, I, I don't, I can't see it any other way. You know, you, that is the worst surface for us to be crashing on, so we should expect the worst damage. Whether it breaks or not, eh, we'll see. Uh, you can also see the motor hole pattern, so you can use different motors on here as well. We've got the, the center hole with the other two holes. Uh, I don't think this will fit. Maybe it will. Let me look it up real quick. Yes, this supports the standard motor hole pattern for the uh, 110X series of motors as well as the 1103 AMAX motors. The 1103 AMAX motors have a little bit of a motor hole pattern or difference. Also, oh, something I forgot. See these extra holes right down here? See those right down there? Let me try to get something, a pointer down there. So you can use different flight stacks if you want to. You do not have to use one of these all-in-one boards. So you can put a 16 by 16 or a 20 by 20 flight stack in there as well. Oh, and I guess the last little detail, I just shoved a little bit of foam down on the hole just to kind of give my antenna a little bit of rigidity. I didn't really do anything special. I just wanted to keep it from flapping down. The, the TBS antennas are, are pretty sturdy. I just want to keep it from creating any sort of leverage for the antenna pops off down in there. So I just stuffed a little foam down in there and that's how I kept mine. And it kind of fits in with the, the white and blue canopy a little bit. It's a little bit um, less of an eyesore than it might otherwise be. And of course I did apply uh, battery lead um, zip tie that way if I have a battery ejection I don't have any problems with it pulling directly on the ESC pads it's something I always do and I bring it up whenever I have a bind and fly so I suppose with my custom builds I should be talking about that as well so yeah that is the Tomoquad CSX it's the race frame as he puts it uh, you can get this from tomoquads.com if you have any comments questions suggestions or otherwise please let me know in the section down below I appreciate your time 
and thanks for watching.